I do that test thing too. Hello, hello. Good. Okay, good, good. Hey, like before, would you mind if we have just one more round of applause, this time for me again? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I joke. It's a joke. Okay. Uh, all right, let's just see here. I've got to make sure this is uh, ready to go. Okay, good. Uh, Jack Lemon, Judson's Hardware, How Our Technology Has Trumped Our Humanity and Giving Birth to a Teenager. Okay, so let me, let me start with the inspiration part. Uh, let me give you, let me start in the most boring way I, that, that only I can do, uh, which is a, a, a very clinical definition of the word. It's a noun, inspiration. It's the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something. So what I wanted to do today is talk about those like three and a half different things that kind of inspired me and got me going. Some of these early on and some of these is, you know, rather recent actually, but things that kind of motivated me and inspired me. And this is the first one. Now, this is going to be difficult for you to see, some of you, maybe the first row. But can you tell me who this is? Oh, good. Yeah, Jack Lemon. Okay. So I was like 13 or 14 years old. And on TV, I saw about four or five of his films within a very short period of time. And it was like a godsend to me, because this is obviously before uh, Netflix and instant streaming and, and DVDs. This is when we had three networks. And uh, uh, I, I saw these films within a very short period of time. And, and this is what I noticed. I would find myself laughing and then later crying, and sometimes in the same film. This is one you know, Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis, Some Like It Hot. Do you know this one here? This is Mr. Roberts, played by Henry Fonda, who's stuck on this pathetic cargo ship, and he's desperate to get off of that ship and into the real war. But it wasn't Fonda I was watching. It was Lemon. I would watch, and I would laugh and laugh and laugh. It was absolutely beautiful. And then I didn't laugh. Now, if you have not seen this movie, I'm going to completely destroy the ending, but I figure it's your fault if you haven't seen this film. Frank, what is it? From laughter to tears as we learn of the death of Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts is dead. And then Lemon kind of turns a corner and gives us this unbelievable performance in Days of Wine and Roses, where he plays a drunk and hit a bottle of booze in the greenhouse someplace. But I was just so moved by his ability to run the complete gamut of emotions from A to Z. And then this next one, well, maybe my favorite, the apartment. He's in love with someone he can't have, Shirley MacLaine. So we go from this very tender scene where he strains spaghetti with a tennis racket to the end of the movie where Shirley MacLaine finally runs smack into the heart of Jack Lemmon. And we go from laughter to tears back to laughter, take a left hand turn back to tears, all inside of one single movie. Which is a great tribute, by the way, to the screenwriter I.A.L. Diamond and the marvelous direction of Billy Wilder. So as I say, I was 13 or 14 years old, and, <laughs> and I thought, now, this, would be, this is a good job. Make people laugh, make people think. Uh, I thought this is something good to do. And I'm no Jack Lemmon, and I'm certainly no Billy Wilder, but uh, here are a couple of things that I had the good fortune to work on with BBDO Advertising in New York. Oh, it's a girl. We'll get them to do a picture of us. Excuse me. Excuse me. You take a picture of us. Oh, of us with no, photo you over there. It. You take our photograph. We take your burro. Ah. With the donkey. Camera burro. Burro, camera, camera burro. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, oh, see, it's not so hard. If you take off to the Italian town of Todi. But your camera just takes off. With the camera. You better have Visa Gold, because there's not a camera store there that takes American Express. Uh, Scusi, would you take a video of us with your burro? Por favore. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. To the Fana Orphanage, I'm writing to you about a child. 
I don't really know what she looks like, but I can describe her to you perfectly. She's very dark, or she's very fair. She's very small, or she's quite big. She's awfully shy, or she's incredibly friendly. She laughs all the time. She cries a lot. I don't know what to call her yet, but I think she knows just what to call me. Enclosed are all the documents you require. And one thing you did. Prop number two. Wait a minute. Okay, this here, this is, this, this is Tom Judson. Let me tell you about this guy, Tom Judson. He owned a hardware store in Big Rapids, Michigan. And I was going to school there. I was, I was 17 years old, almost 18, and I was working at the campus radio station. And I was asked to go sell Tom Judson advertising, time. And uh, it, 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 I was told that he would probably buy advertising because he did every year. And the reason why, by the way, he would have an interest in selling, I mean, buying time on a campus radio station is because he also sold skis during the winter time. And uh, so I, I was told that this guy is, is old, crotchety, surly. He would buy advertising, but he would put me through the ringer. And he did. I, I wrote six or seven radio scripts had an appointment with him, I showed up, and, and I gave him the scripts, he read them, and then he handed them back to me, and he said, start over, these are no good, these are not written for the college kid, and that they were pedestrian. And I, I felt awful, it was my first time, and, and he was right, is, 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 is the real clinker, he was right. So I went back to my, clinker, is that the right word for that? Okay, we'll go with it. I went back to my dorm room. I, I, I wrote another five or six or seven different scripts. And I remember these were good, and I can't quite remember what they were about, but I remember, all I remember is that I compared the shape of skis to a woman's figure or something like that. But they were okay. I, I remember feeling pretty good about them. And I went back to Tom Judson, surly, crotchety Tom Judson, and uh, he looked at my scripts, and he did this. He put one over here, he read the next one, put it over there, another one over there, another one there, and then he picked up one of the two stacks and he handed one of those stacks back to me and he said, run these. And I left Judson's Hardware and I felt great and I have no idea why. This is a guy who sold hammers, but there was something about his approval that was so wonderful to me. So the season ran on, the three or four months, and we ran those scripts, and I had to go back to meet with Tom Judson again. And I didn't want to, uh, but I did, to ask him how well we did with uh, his skis. And this is the lesson that I remember to this day, obviously, or I wouldn't be telling it to you. And I said, Mr. Judson, how did we do? And he said, well, I can't say we sold any more skis this year than in prior years. He said, but I've never seen as many students in here ever before. He says, the way I see it, it works like this. It's your job to get them into the store, and it's my job to sell the skis. And I thought, that's advertising. That's what it's all about. It's just to get you into the store. And that's a lot like a lesson I learned many years later from a great advertising guy named Hal Reine. Uh, and I was doing some freelance writing for him, and I was on the phone with him. And I said to Hal, I said, tell me, give me some information about this product that we're selling research anything that you can send me. And he said, I'll, I'll send you whatever you want, but an advertiser wants two things. He wants to be liked, and he wants to be remembered. And I thought, Tom Judson. I said, that's what advertising really is. Now, here's something that I will 
do and run here that I think kind of fits into this whole idea of the kinds of things that I'm attracted to are stories and emotion and humor rather than my discount is bigger than your discount. This is something that I did uh, rather recently, maybe a year ago or so, for American Airlines with the advertising agency TM Advertising in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> who put our country first. We're honored to do the same for you. Okay. Uh. Thank you. Prop number four. Um, no, I'm not going to get religious on you. <laughs> I'm really not. But I can't do this presentation without mentioning this scriptures, right? And the reason why I do this is because I, I, I start every morning for two hours and I read this. It's every morning. It's a routine for me and it has been for I don't know how long, at least 20 years. The reason why I'm saying this is because it is one of those things that inspire me and I, it keeps my feet planted on the ground. And it's the reason why also that I live in Traverse City, Michigan, because it keeps my feet planted on the ground. Uh, there's something that Einstein said that I think is really appropriate. He says, it's become appallingly clear that our technology has surpassed our humanity. And I can't let that happen. Not to me, not selfishly, anyhow. Now, I don't know how that, this finds its way into my work, and probably in some shape or form it finds its way into all of my work. But here's something that I did for Hallmark Cards, which might sort of fit into this realm a little bit, uh, with Leo Burnett Advertising in Chicago. And next year I might get to go to camp for two whole weeks because that's my favorite thing to do. Good, Lily. Daniel? What is he doing? Go ahead. My name is Danny Bennett, and this is my life story. Daniel? Is that a Christmas tree on it? Yes. Class? <laughs> Go ahead. When I was born, my mom gave me this because I cried all the time, except when I was in the car. So she drove me around all night so I'd sleep. When I was three, I took my first airplane trip. And I kind of got sick when I took off. I listened to the wind, to the wind of my soul. Then, when I was five, we went to the zoo. And all well, the I'll end up where well, I think only God really knows. I grew up and I'll work at the zoo or be a veteran. This is my brother, Lou. I've sat upon the set in the sun. Then I learned how to read. But never, 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 never. Shining star, and that's my life story. Well, wait a minute, Daniel. Why the shiny star? I listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul. Because my mom says I'm the light of her life. Where I'll end up, well, I think only God really knows. Very good, Daniel. Make their memories of childhood last a lifetime with Hallmark keepsake ornaments. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this is the next prop. This is the point five. 
and I don't know why I gave this a point five because in some ways this is, uh, this is maybe the most important thing. Uh, this is a bank and the brain I compare to a bank because what happens is, is that you have to take withdrawals all the time from your brain. Uh, but in order to do so, you have to make deposits. It has to be this kind of thing that happens. You make deposits so that you can make withdrawals. And uh, I think that, uh, hi John, uh, I think that uh, it comes from all sorts of different places, these deposits. It, it comes from art, it comes from good literature, it comes from movies, photography. It comes from many different places. And it comes, I think, from life itself. It's just being aware of what is around you. And I'll give you an example of that. When, uh, when I was a teenager, er, any time my parents would say anything to me, I would roll my eyes. And then, and then when I was a parent of teenagers, any time I said anything to them, they would roll their eyes. It's, it goes on, it's forever, it's an eternal thing. <laughs> Which I put to use in, in this little public service announcement. Here we go, one big push. <laughs> Congratulations. It's a teenager. <laughs> Don't even think about going to Kevin's. It takes one powerful mother to have a teen. Learn how to keep yours safe and stay sane at drugfree.org. It's universal. Okay, by the way, I normally do like, I don't do a lot of takes with actors, maybe three, four, or five. I bet I did 40 to get that roll of the eyes. It just, it had to be right. So I'm, that, by the way, was done with a Martin Williams Agency in Minneapolis. I was really excited to work on that one. Uh, so inspiration, I'm going to sit down now because I think I've, I've overstayed myself. But it comes from all around us. We just have to be aware of it. Let me give you one more definition of the word. There are two definitions of the word inspiration, one I already gave you. The second one is the drawing in of breath, inhalation. It is breathing in life. Thank you.